Welcome to another video with Mr. Long. And if you are a grade 10 IT student, then this is the video for you. Hopefully you've just learned about for loops and I'm just going to give you a basic introduction into trace tables. Trace tables are a great way for us to keep track of how our variables and our outputs are working while we are tracing code. It allows us to pick up any problems that code, it allows us to identify errors in our logic. We are basically trying to be the computer and change the variables as the computer would, but just really, really slowly. So let's look at an example of how we can use trace tables with for loops. Yeah, I've got a random code segment. It's just random code that does random things. There's no real point to it, but I'm just using this as an example of how we can trace our code and see how the variables change throughout the program. Before you start tracing code, this is what I tend to do to set things up. You're going to need a table and then you need columns. Now I use a column for the line to indicate which line we are currently executing. Then you need a column for each variable. Yeah, you'll notice we've got a total variable. We've got an num variable and we've got a looping variable called K. So I've indicated them to each have their own column so that I can keep track of what those values are going to be throughout this code segment. Then the moment you have an if statement, later on you'll learn about conditional loops. We'll use it for that as well. But the moment you've got a condition like this, an if statement, something that can be true or false, then I put a t slash if. That's where we're going to say that line was true or that line was false. And then I always have an output column. That's going to be whatever is going to be displayed to the user. Anything where you are changing an edit box or you're adding things to a memo control, that's where you're going to put your output. So that's the first thing I do when setting up my trace table. Make sure that you've got a column for each variable, have a true and false if you've got some sort of condition and make sure you've got an output column. The next is to be very careful that we group the right code together because remember for loops and if statements, they only do one line of code unless it begins and ends and so on. We've got to be very careful that we know what is connected to what. So for example here, this for loop has a begin and that's where the end is. So we know that that whole code over there is going to be associated with a for loop. So I'm going to put that line over there just so that I can remind myself that this is all connected together. And there we've got an if statement. Now there's no begin and end for that if statement, but that if statement only has one line of code associated with it. So therefore that if statement only does that. But just so that I know that these lines aren't connected to the if statement, I'm actually going to mark that off as well. So there we go. You can see that I've marked that off. So only that line is associated with if statement. All of these lines are associated with the for loop. So now that we've done that, it should make our life a lot easier when doing the trace table. So let's go. We're going to start with line one. Remember, we go in sequential order. But when we get to the for loop, that's when we're going to be looping back and forth. So let's go line number one. That simply says set our total to a zero. So we're going to give that a zero value. Then we're going to move on to line two. I try to make sure that I do each line on a brand new line in my table. I know it's nice to maybe put them next to each other. If you don't want to do that, just do it one line at a time. So in this line, line two, our num is equal to a zero. So under the our num column, we're going to put a zero and then we jump to line three. Now this is a for loop. It starts at a particular value and goes until another value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the K value. It starts off being a three. So I put a three over there, but we need to remember that when we get to a five, that's when this whole thing stops. So let's go inside the for loop. We now jump to line four. So line four is a question. It's a true or false. Is K mod two equal to one? In other words, is K divided by two going to have a remainder of one or is K odd basically is what we're asking. If I divide two into three, you, remember you always use the latest value of the variable. So if I put two into three, there's going to be one remainder. If I divide two into three, there will be one remainder. So that statement is true. So I'm going to put a T there. And because that line is true, I must do line five. So we definitely going to do line five, which says take the total value, which is zero, take the K value, which is zero, take the I num value, which is three. So naught, naught and three, add them together. So that's going to equal to three. And we put that value into total. So total is now going to change to a three. So now we must just remember whenever we use our total again, we must use the latest value of our total. Then we're going to move to line six because we are still in the for loop. And that says increase our num by three. So whatever our num is at the moment, add three onto it. So naught plus three, that's going to also change to a three. And then line seven, we are displaying something. We must display the r total variable. What's the r total variable? Three. So in the output, we will put a three. Now we're at the end of our loop. Now we're going to jump back up to line three. That's why I know because of this little marker, I know that up oh, we at the end, we must jump back up over here. K is equal to a new value. So we increase it by one. So it was, where's, okay, there's K. It was three. It now changes to the next 
incremental number which is a four and then we do the loop again now we go to line four now if i divide four by two there will be zero remainder so that line is actually false now because that line is false we don't do line five we jump straight to line six and we increase our num by three so our num was a three it now adds on another three so it's going to become six and then i jump to line seven which says display our total which hasn't changed it's still a three but we must display it again so we're displaying that three again okay we at the end of the loop we're going to jump back up over here to line three and k must increase by one so k is a four we're going to now change it to a five and then i come back to line four and five which is the latest value of k divided by two will have a remainder of one so that is true so therefore we must do line five so we're going to do line five and line five says take the total value which is the latest total which is a three take the latest k value is a five take the latest r num value which is a six and add them together so five plus six plus three that's going to be 14. so what do we do with that 14 we put it into our total so our total is going to change to a 14. then we do line six which means increase r num by three so r num was a six it now becomes a nine and then we do line seven and line seven says display our total display our total our total is a 14 so our output must be a 14 now we're at the end of our loop now we jump back up here now in most trace tables you will go okay we are at the end of the loop it's a five we can stop we can go out of that loop but technically you don't have to actually do this line but i'm going to do it just for interest sake this line actually does increase k to a six it increases it to one and goes hey we are now out of range of our for loop so therefore this loop will not do this and it will jump to line eight so even though it goes to five it actually does increase one more time if i have to display k over here somewhere you'll notice that it'll because it's one over the last value of the for loop variable but you don't actually have to do this line so if you don't do that line you, i don't think you'll be losing marks if you ever do that in a test but just so that you are aware that it actually does increase k to a six because hey we're not in this range of three to five so we will stop the loop so if you ever use k over here and you haven't changed it it's actually going to refer to a six not a five but anyway so we are at the end of our loop our loop is completed so we can't do this again so once the loop is completed we jump down to line eight and line eight simply says display our num so what is the last value of our num which is a nine so we're going to come here and put a nine and that is the end of our code segment so if we look here if we had a memo control it would display a three a three a 14 and a nine and there we go and that's how you trace code so this way allows you to see how the variables change we obviously did it very slowly compared to a computer but we are able to see how the code changes and understand what this code is trying to do so this allows me to understand the code and see where i might be making any mistakes so there we go trace tables a very useful tool in trying to debug your code or to try to understand how your loops are working so there we go that is trace tables for more RT related content like for loops, you make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long RT and Cat. We also do videos on HTML, Access, Excel, and Word. And click on our subscribe button for TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.